Hello YouTube. In this video we're going to take a look at how a Core 2 Duo Mac handles OS X El Capitan, which is the upcoming release with version number 10.11. First let's go to the Apple menu and about this Mac to see which Mac we are running here. In this video I will be using a Mac Mini mid-2010 with 2.4GHz Core 2 Duo CPU, 5GB of RAM, an SSD, and a NVIDIA GeForce 320M video card. So if you're running a slightly older Mac performance should be a little bit less than this, and if you're running a newer Mac, of course, performance would be better. What I want to talk about here is some things that El Capitan does differently to OS X Yosemite, which is the previous release 10.10. .10. Most of all, El Capitan is, an, is a release that will increase performance, whereas Yosemite was more of a new feature build, El Capitan is definitely more geared towards performance, just like iOS 9 on the mobile platform from Apple. So, what this video is about is just to show you around how OS X El Capitan uh, runs on a Core 2 Duo Mac like this, which is 2.4 GHz dual core CPU, and not all that much memory. It's only 5 GB, so if you have 4 GB, performance should be pretty similar. And, uh, you know, it's just an overall way to show you how it runs and what you can still do with these Macs, because they're surprisingly potent for their uh, for their age. I certainly would like to see you try to run Windows 7, for instance, or Windows 8 or Windows 10 on a Core 2 Duo machine with just 4 gigabytes of RAM, and uh, see it do the same things. I've tried this with uh, a couple of my laptops, and I must say I was slightly impressed with this uh, Mac Mini on OS X El Capitan. So, my, my SSD is slightly full, um, I've got about 40 gigs of data on it. As you can see here, 5 gigabytes of RAM. So that's all added away. So, uh, let's give this SSD a run for it. And it actually wanted to reboot. Wow. As you can see, all applications came up just fine. And pretty quickly at that. You have to take into consideration that uh, this recording is hammering the CPU quite a bit. So like I said, we'll add some clips later to show you these things without recording to uh, make sure the performance delta is not as big as it would be in real life. Because performance is definitely good enough to uh, watch HD YouTube videos in 1080p. Uh, you can watch uh, or you can stream a Blu-ray over the inter internet just fine. So, or well, at least over the network. So. We're going to take a look at all that later. Let's just get an overall feel for the performance. For instance, let's open up YouTube here. Comes up pretty quickly. You can snap it full screen. Currently not logged into my own account on this particular Mac because it's not officially mine. But uh, that's not really the point here. Um. Yeah, you know, let's just pick a video that's definitely 1080p and see how that runs during the recording. Let's fill in HD so we get the full stuff. Let's set the resolution here. It's set to 1080p. Let's go full screen. click play. Even during the recording there isn't all that much frame drop. So as you can see even this little Core 2 Duo is still perfectly capable of running 1080p HD video. I do not know if the sound of that particular video is actually being recorded as well. If it is then I apologize because you probably couldn't hear what I was saying there. But yeah, I should probably just let it run from the beginning again. There we go. Right, so at least it was running fine. It's doing something in the background, I suppose. But yeah, HD YouTube video in 1080p works just fine on this. So if you have a Core 2 Duo machine with 2.4 GHz or 2 GHz, it should be pretty similar. You can still watch HD video just fine on OS X El Capitan. So there's no change there if you're still running, for instance, Lion or Mountain Lion. 
so now we know that works. Let's open up Word. Let's see how fast that comes up. There we go. And for good measure, let's uh, load up a couple of different websites. Let's see. Let's go to tweakers.net. That's one of my favorite websites. Again, YouTube. Let's see. What else should we do? CNN.com. So we're letting all of that run. There we go. So now we've got all that up and running. Let's see how much RAM it's actually using to see how big the memory footprint of El Capitan is. I'm just going to use a keyboard shortcut in the finder. Let's go to activity monitor here. There we go. As you can see, or as you can tell by the memory pressure, it's still green, so we're well within limits. We have 5 gigabytes in total. About 3 gigabytes of that in total is in use. You need to uh, not use your Windows state of mind here. OS X uses as much memory as possible so apps can run from memory instead of just from disk and it just improves performance significantly. So if this number is slightly high that's perfectly fine as long as it's not as high as your physical memory. And if it starts swapping you can tell by the memory pressure because the disk will turn red. As you can see the memory pressure is quite low so there's absolutely no worries if you're going to run El Capitan on 4 or 5 gigabytes of memory. It should be just fine. So let's close down Safari and uh, end this part of the screencast here to show you uh, with showing how El Capitan handles during a video recording. So now I will grab my camera and we will take a look at these things from a different perspective to show you how things are running. And here is that same Mac Mini in person. So let's take a look at some jobs that this thing can do without recording. So we're going to take a look at the iRobot movie, which is a 1080p Blu-ray. This is an untouched Blu-ray. And let's see how it runs. As you can see, no frame drops to uh, speak of. Let's jump to a, another pointed movie. There we go. Again, no dropped frames, full quality. Full screen doesn't change that. So it's perfectly capable of handling Blu-rays, even in L OS X El Capitan. So no change there, so it's still a perfectly capable media player. And of course it will do 1080p YouTube videos. Again, this time without a recording overhead. No frame drops whatsoever. Buttery smooth. I know a lot of Cartoduo machines really struggle with 1080p video. The upside of this particular Mac Mini is, of course, the GeForce graphics card that definitely offloads some of the uh, some of the video load. But yeah, this pretty much uh, concludes my video on showing you. Uh, well, OS X El Capitan running on a car to duo Mac. Uh, if you're still running a car to duo Mac with similar specifications, there is absolutely no reason to worry, and you should definitely upgrade if you want a performance boost over Yosemite if you're running that. If you are still running uh, OS X Mountain Lion or Mavericks, you might want to stick to those because they will, uh, you know, run better than uh, Yosemite and El Capitan would because they're slightly older and have a lower memory footprint, or a smaller memory footprint, rather. So that's something to take into account. But will it run OS X El Capitan? Absolutely. Just saw some proof of it. Some very demanding tasks. And uh, it uh, absolutely passed. It's, it's a very good experience so far. And I'm definitely looking forward to El Capitan. Even if I will be running a Core to Duo Mac. So yeah, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.